You know, we live in a world where Metacritic tells people what is and what isn't worth playing. So much so that companies use the Metacritic score on the box in order to advertise the game. Yes, it's that serious. What about those games on the opposite end of the spectrum? The poor games, the terrible games. We know about the MVP baseballs and NFL 2Ks, but what about those ones that are a little less unfortunate? Let's take a dive into that. What can I say? I'm a sadist. After this, I'm going to chew tinfoil and watch a Raiders game. It's all the same at this point. So for those of you that don't know, Metacritic is a website that takes critic reviews from all over the web and averages them out to a score to get what they call a Metacritic score. Think Rotten Tomatoes, but just for video games. This site right here is one of the main reasons why people are so obsessed with score numbers. So much so, they don't even read any part of the review. Oh, IGN's Death Stranding review. Oh, what is with all these words? Come on, oh! 6.8, there we go. See, I knew this game sucked. Look Looks like I dodged a bullet. I think you see my point. So let's get started with our first game, NFL Tour. Now, NFL Tour is made by EA Sports. Now, the game's a spiritual successor to. It's a spiritual successor to the NFL Street games. I mean, you're not gonna get any complaints by me. Those games were really, really fun. But NFL Tour is kind of like a bare bones version. The game's commentary is by, of all people, Trey Wingo. I am video game announcer. Hear me repeat. You hear that? No, I don't, Trey Wingo, who's totally not in front of a green screen. Shut up! Just shut up! You know, I guess they were going for this Tim Kitzrow Midway Sports commentating feel. Did you know that the Western Roman Empire fell in 476 AD? What can they do on first down? He just constantly breaks the fourth wall, and when I say constantly breaks the fourth wall, I mean he just states that he's saying the same lines over and over again because he's in a video game. Do you like video game announcers that repeat themselves? Neither do I. Too bad. Competitive line coming in three, two, one. The gameplay is shallow. When you're the ball carrier, you're supposed to press X to break tackles. Muscles free. Oh, look at the strength. Steps free. Still free. What a move. Every other play looks like citizens trying to tackle the greased up death guy. You're never going to catch me. You're wasting your time. Forget about it. Go do something else. I almost forgot they had to throw in that six axis integration too. You remember that? You wildly flail the controller around until you break tackles. Sounds fun? It isn't. Let's point out the arenas that you play at real quick. They're all the same and none of them have any of the sort of personality that the NFL street games had. Can you tell the New York arena apart from all these other ones? Offense is just way too good in this game. The AI on defense is non-existent and it just makes this a scoring fest. I mean, yeah, there's the tackle breaking I mentioned earlier, but throwing the ball is almost unstoppable. I mean, can you even get interceptions in this game? Or fumbles? The only fumble I got that wasn't a botch pitch was me activating this thingy. The NFL would like to remind our viewers at home that tickets are very reasonable. Second and a lot. Wolf's one up down the middle. Culpepper, Coleman. I guess this is supposed to be the game breaker, but it's not nearly as hype as it was in NFL Street. <laughs> As far as other game modes go, you have tour mode, where you just have to beat other NFL teams. So basically arcade mode. You have this other mode where you just hold on to the ball to get points. You know, it's essentially a bad Mario Party minigame that goes on for four and a half minutes too long. And one of my favorite things about this game is the way how Trey Wingo says Donald Driver's last name. Driver! Hey Trey, what's your favorite video game? Driver! Hey Trey, what's your favorite golf club? Driver! Favorite movie? The Driver! <laughs> and you have this last mode, which is essentially score a touchdown. Woo! And that's that. What a blah game. The graphics, blah. The gameplay, blah. The game modes, blah. Trey Wingo? I'm gonna repeat myself a lot, especially the more you play the game, so <laughs> keep playing. What? I'm in your brain. Eh, he's kind of entertaining. Overall, I kind of agree with the 46 Metascore. Imagine spending $60 on this game. Next game up, we have Pure Football Authentic Soccer. Wow, what a name. You know, they should release a baseball game in Europe and call it Simulation Rounders Realistic Baseball. I mean, it's just as silly. But any game that claims it's so pure would be pretty realistic, right?
about that. Despite what the title may lead you to believe, this is actually an arcade style game. The game actually opens up with this completely unnecessary tutorial that explains like eight things and how to sprint is one of them. All of this stuff you can figure out on your own, so I don't know why they even bothered putting this in and making it mandatory. So when you actually get into a game, it looks really, really nice and has a variety of different locations and they all actually look unique. Coming from the last game, it's nice to play in something that's not generic field number 69. The gameplay is simplistic though. Kick the ball in the net. The arcade stuff isn't even really all that over the top. No crazy tricks with the ball, no explosions, no players turning into fire, no punching other players, no nothing. It's all very blah. The game's functional, it works. I mean, moving your player on defense is like trying to control a guy with wheels for feet because he doesn't stop moving, but it works. Just no pizzazz is in the gameplay. But where's the pizzazz? It's boring! I think what happened was these guys, uh, Ubisoft, wanted to make an actual simulation game, but they couldn't do it really well, so they added in all these arcade elements as well to try and create some type of fusion of the two. Just keep fusions to science and Dragon Ball Z, I say. There's this career mode where you can create your guy and take other players from other teams to build your own team. Now, you can create one hell of a human being, if I do say so myself. Look, his calves are just as thick as his thighs. His jaw is so sharp. Careful, you can puncture the hull of an Empire-class Fire Nation battleship, leaving thousands to drown at sea. Because, you know, it's so sharp. You can acquire players by doing certain objectives in a game, like core 10 shots on goal. This is kind of cool. It does the ultimate team thing, but you earn guys through gameplay and not whatever this is. You know what, let's try and play a game online. Must be server maintenance. Besides career mode and regular exhibition, there's really not much else to say or to do in this game. I think the main thing about this game is that the gameplay is so... Blah. Oh, this game is boring. <laughs> oh. Alright, so next up is Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5. Why is that on here? The Tony Hawk games are awesome. Yeah, I remember getting the demo disc that came in a pizza box that had Tony Hawk Pro Skater on it. These games were arcadey fun. The best part about them was the track layouts that encouraged exploration while shredding ass. Do people say that? This new one is doing what a lot of other games are doing this generation. Capitalizing on nostalgia. Only thing is these games were made with love and care poured into them by passionate developers. While this is what I like to call Tony Hawk Pro Skater in name only, otherwise known as Tupacino. Okay, so everything this game advertises on its Amazon page is 100% a lie. Classic Tony Hawk Pro Skater gameplay. It imitates it, I'll say that. Seamless online multiplayer. Yeah, when the game loads after like 235 million minutes, there are people randomly skating around, but you can't even really interact with them. So seamless. Oh, and there's no local multiplayer, by the way. <laughs> Have fun. Play as a pro or create a skater. You can play as pros, you got me there. But create a skater is nowhere to be found. You can swap different body parts to create some type of crazy amalgamation of a human being. But being able to go in depth with creation like some of the older games? No. Endless shred sessions. My sessions with the game have been anything but endless. As a matter of fact, I think if your play sessions of this game were endless, I think you entered some type of crazy purgatory. If you build it, they will skate. I don't even know what the hell this means, but judging from the sales of this game, not true. Also, it says something about create a skate park, so I guess they kind of got me there because it is in the game. But in this create a skate park, you're just thrown into a smaller version of a level, and you work around that. So, your mileage may vary on that. <sighs> you could just tell this was a cash grab. The missions are boring. Beat this score, keep scoring unless your head explodes, clear the pool of this object. Nothing really creative that stands out here. 
Even the levels are all empty and lack any sort of personality. They're all barren wastelands with nothing in them besides rails and ramps. The graphics are terrible. It's like they added cell shading to it last minute just to cover up how bad it really looked. Oh, that's what they actually did. This sucks. And was only made to get one last boost of money out of the Tony Hawk games before Activision lost its license. This game hurts to play. And I haven't even brought up any of the glitches, the launch day stuff that happened with it, and the fact that the initial install patch is a billion gigabytes fucking huge. Alright, I'm done with that. Next one is Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5 on the Xbox One. For yeah, no. For our real final game, we got Mike Tyson. Not that one. I'm talking about Mike Tyson Heavyweight Boxing by Codemasters. Ah, Codemasters. Developers of such great games like... Boy, they sure do develop games, all right. Okay, so I was going to use an emulator to play this game instead of just buying it, but this is how the emulator ran the game. So safe to say I didn't actually play it like that. And because I care so much about you guys, all 42 of you, I bought the actual game, so I hope you guys are all appreciative. Just from the naked eye, it seems like a regular old boxing game with, you know, tit physics. It's a big favorite here. I would love to see him win. Oh, don't mind me, I'll be in the bathroom. But with this assumption, you would assumingly assume that the game is easy to play, I'd assume. But your assumption is just ass. Let me introduce you guys to something modern gamers aren't really familiar with. An instruction manual. And you know, I feel like pointing this out because this is one thick instruction manual. Pages and pages of stuff. Most of it is just combos though. You know, if I showed you this out of context, you'd think it's some traditional fighting game. There are multiple types of punches you can throw, jabs, straights, hooks, crosses, uppercuts, even illegal stuff like dick punches. This is where the combos come in. Each fighter has their own personal combos. You see those stars on the bottom? When you get those, that's when you could do your combo. You can also dodge incoming punches, but it's tricky to pull off because the animations are so janky. You can't really tell what's going on and what's what. So if you want to win a match of Mike Tyson's heavyweight boxing, I'm pretty sure this is the only legitimate way you can do it. You punch the guy so you can get your star, block his offense, then do your combo. The combos are the only way to do some halfway decent damage. After that, you either win or you lose based on how lucky you are. Or you can just get a draw, like I did. Outside of just normal one-on-one -on -one boxing, there's not much to do here. There's a bare bones create a boxer feature. Oh, Mike Tyson. You know, I kind of forgot about him, but this is his game after all. And speed boxing, which is just boxing, but instead of three rounds and a possibility of a decision, it's just one five minute round. You know, I think I spent like 10 bucks on this game and I still feel kind of ripped off. I pray for the dozens of individuals who actually spent $50 on this. Oh man. To quote Metacritic user WW, this game is a load of rubbish. If you want a boxing game, by Fight Night. I like how he wrote the review on the 24th of December. It's like he got the game as an early shitty Christmas present or something. Yeah, so this wasn't the most torturing experience known to man, but possibly the most boring. It's boring, boring, very, very boring. I personally would rather play something that is bad rather than playing something that's boring. Sure, the boring game may work on a technical level, but there's nothing to it. At least a bad game can make some kind of impression on you, give you stories to tell, you can laugh at it, etc, etc. These games are just digital Tylenol, an obscure cure for insomnia. It's like... like... So I know there are some popular sports games that are low scoring on Metacritic that I didn't cover. Unfortunately, you can't really cover it all because the video has to end at some point. 
Maybe if this video gets 100,000 views, but the odds of that happening are the same as if EA released the game without microtransactions.